Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about Javi Galan, Aubameyang, and we're, go we're also going to be incorporating Ansu Fati. There's plenty to discuss within today's video, but before we go into any of this, I do want to speak about our sponsor for today, and that is going to be the One Football app. If you guys want to find out where I do get all of my information, how I make these videos, where I do get my team stats, the player stats, all of that information is compact within the One Football app. They have great articles for you guys to read. It's very entertaining. I hope you guys do enjoy it if you guys do want to download the one football app you can so by scanning the qr code that you do see here on the screen and there's also a link down below that takes you straight to the app store then you can download the one football app set exactly who and what you do want to follow and then you'll be set and done from there again it's for free you guys will enjoy it let me know how it goes and now let's go back into the video and let's talk about these three players because look if you guys are new here if you guys are watching me for the first time basically barcelona's situation is this we are going to be bringing in brand new players but there is going to be a lot of extra exits that is going to be happening within the next eight days because this week is going to be critical we only have eight days left before the transfer window does close so barcelona is moving very very fast and so let's focus on javi galan because there is interest again yes we have been interested in this player before the only reason why it did cool down it is because barcelona were focused on four different targets it was Lewandowski, rafinha kunde and kessi barcelona have done what they had to do they have brought in those four players into the club and now they are re-emerging on their interest with javi Javi Galan. They basically strengthened this team overall and now they're asking, okay, how can we fine tune this team? And so when it comes to Javi Galan, it does say here, according to Mateo Moreto, Javi Galan is more than just an option at Barcelona. There is very big interest as there are problems in closing Alonso due to fair play. Javi Galan is open to a move and his wages won't be an issue either. Celta Vigo won't make it easy though. A possible offer from Barcelona will not reach 18 million euros, which is what Celta are asking for, but they won't be as far off either they will be very close to what celta is asking for so of course barcelona do not want to pay the full amount and whatever celta is asking for in the very beginning this barcelona club is always going to be taking their time in terms of like these transfers they want to get the best possible deal and if you guys are wondering what type of deal and what type of bid is barcelona going to be presenting barcelona is expected to put out a bid of around 10 to 12 million euros for this player now look there has been many questions around this move because yesterday we saw Alejandro Balde have a great performance. He even got an assist. The way that he moved forward was aggressive. He was dynamic. He followed the orders of Xavi Hernandez in terms of the defensive game and the offensive game. And at the age of 18 years old, for him to play like this, we only have to build upon this player. Like, I don't even mean to overrate this player, but I remember when I saw Lewandowski score that goal, and then we saw Lewandowski go on with Alejandro Balde and hug him and say, thank you for that assist. What I saw there at that moment was Lewandowski just looking at Alfonso Davis is the exact same way. Like that goal between Alejandro Balde and Lewandowski, that was pure Alfonso Davis and Lewandowski energy. That's all it was. So the question does continue to remain. Why does Barcelona want someone like Javi Galan when they have someone like Alejandro Balde who is really coming in through the ranks? And it does say here, according to Mateo Moreto, that for now, the emergence of Balde in the team hasn't made any impact on Barcelona's idea of getting a brand new left back. So it's quite clear that Barcelona do want to go for a brand new left back, even though Balde has been playing very very well. Now, here's the thing. If we actually get Galan and we still have Balde and also Jordi Alba, the only thing I do want to see moving forward would be to see Galan and Balde rotate heavily and Jordi Alba being the backup to either Balde or Galan in case one of those two players do get injured. Because in that way, if we have those three players, of course, Xavi Hernandez is going to be having no left back issues. But again, the priority would be for Galan and Balde to heavily rotate on that left side. Jordi Alba, again, will be the one to take that step down. So why does Barcelona want Galan? sportingly like what makes him so good why does Barcelona believe that this player can make and strengthen the left wing position now one thing that we do have to get very clear when it comes to Galan is that Galan was one of the best defenders in the previous season within La Liga if we look at the stats here we can see that he was in first place when it came to the most tackles distributed within La Liga with a total of 127 if we look at how many tackles he has won he came in second place within La Liga with a total of 77 tackles won we go into the top five leagues overall in terms of who had the most tackles won Galan was in fifth place and then we go into the amount of carries into the final third Javi Galan within La Liga came in at third place so you can see that Galan is a overall very solid left back a very well-rounded left back that for sure will strengthen the left back left wing position and that is why Xavi Hernandez does want this player and why the club the board members are very interested in this bright star and Galan is 27 years old it's, a, it's going to be a very similar signing to what we could make 
stick with Bernardo Silva. He's very well established and Galan is going to be coming in here with a lot of experience. And so if Barcelona can get this player here, who was again, one of the best defenders in La Liga in the previous season for a total of around 10 to 12 million euros, it would be a very solid signing. Now let's move on towards the next phase of this video. Now let's talk about Aubameyang because the exit of this player is getting closer than ever. And yes, more than Memphis Depay. It does say here, according to 21 Marty, that Barcelona and Chelsea are very close to reaching an agreement for the transfer of Aubameyang. Chelsea will pay 22 million euros plus 5 million euros in bonuses and it could be closed within the next few hours. So maybe, hopefully, by the time I do upload this video, maybe the full operation between Aubameyang, Chelsea and Barcelona is 100% done. And the fact that Barcelona are going to be receiving a grand total of 27 million euros for this player, this would be a very crazy move. Like a very crazy move and a huge benefit to this club because the fact that we got a bombing for free back in January and then sell him for 27 million euros in total, including the bonuses, that is a huge W for this club. Now I know that when it comes to this move, there is going to be backlash, but the profit is just too good. Like we got him for free and now we're just getting 27 million euros. Barcelona are only going to be profiting, not just economically, but sportingly because he scored so many goals. He brought great success to this club and now we're going to be given 27 million euros. Do I believe that this move is going to be stopping the Memphis operation and him moving to Juventus? I don't think so because Memphis is not a number nine. He has nothing to do with what Aubameyang does on the field. And once we do have Aubameyang off this squad, if it does happen, because anything could happen in this football transfer window, like I've said before, the one player that could be that backup to Lewandowski in case he does get fatigued or he gets injured or maybe he's just too tired or, or we need to rotate and come out with a different front three, Ansu Fati can't play in the center. You look at how Ansu Fati did perform against Sociedad, he took on the center position a lot. Like his ability to hold the ball and to create around him, like how he created with Dembele and, and the fact that Dembele scored that goal, Ansu Fati is a great ball distributor and he can move greatly inside that box. And when it comes to this player himself, it does say here, according to many sources within Spain, that Ansu Fati is now ready to start in every game. The coaching staff is very pleased with his physical response, although they will continue to remain very cautious. And so the fact that Ansu Fati is now like 99% fit, this fixes so many problems. Barcelona are able to do so much more, even with Aubameyang leaving and Memphis Depay leaving. We could have our main front three being Ansu Fati, Lewandowski, and Dembele. If Lewandowski ever does need to take that step down because of injury or maybe he's just too fatigued, we could easily have Ansu Fati in the center, Rafinha on the left, and Dembele on the right, and then having Ferran Torres replace either of those three players because he can't be just another player that can play in all of those positions. But going back to Aubameyang, one of the main reasons on why Chelsea is going to be paying so much for this player, like another factor on this operation is the fact that Chelsea themselves are desperate for a striker right now. They're in desperate need. You look at how they performed against Leeds, they lost 3-0 and that is a huge L. Like I do think that if you look at the game, you can see that Chelsea are so capable to create. Like they have no problem creating opportunities just like Barcelona, but they have no finisher within the box. It is so unpresent that Chelsea just really do suffer in those games and that is why they want to bring in someone like Aubameyang. He is so much needed within Tuchel's starting 11 and that is why Chelsea are going very aggressive on this window to really be prepared for the upcoming games and apparently their solution is to bring in someone like Aubameyang who is also very experienced with playing within the Premier League. So that is going to be wrapping up today's Barcelona Daily News. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are new here, welcome to the channel. Please like, subscribe, comment and I will see you guys in the next video.